Welcome to the first Spirit and Truth webinar of this year. We're excited about 2020 and having, having some guests that we had last year come back and join us. And we're going to have some new guests this year. So we're really excited about that. Make sure that you pay, um, follow us on social media, Access Worship International. You can check us out on our YouTube channel, on uh, Instagram and Facebook. And uh, all of these webinars, once we do them live, we do archive them. We, we put them up on our YouTube site. So all the ones we did last year are available to watch, and they're all really good. And this is exciting for us at Access. We're starting to make those available one at a time in Russian. So we have a friend who's doing voiceovers, so you get to watch you know, the first one, uh, Kim Walker Smith, that one's done. So it's fun here, you know, watching Kim talk and like hearing like Russian. <laughs> it's, it's nice. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, if you're watching, please do comment. Let us know where you're watching from and uh, say hello. Uh, what else? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so this is Josh Baldwin, everybody. We are so thankful to have you with hey. us again, Josh. The last time, I think last time we talked to you was like, in the spring, maybe May of last year, something like that. Yeah, that's right. And so much has happened since then. So much has happened, yeah. So it's, much. It kind of feels just like it was a couple weeks ago, though, to me in some ways. Well, do you know, a friend of mine showed me this really interesting chart about how our perception of time um, gets shorter or it changes as we get older. It's oh, because, so think about this. When you're a year old, that's one year is the that's a hundred percent of your lifetime. Yeah. But once you when you've lived for two years, then one year is half of your lifetime. Wow. When you have lived for three years, one year is a third of your lifetime. So the so I'm forty three and that's two two point three percent of my lifetime. I can't remember. I forget now. But anyway. I'm forty. I've actually I turned forty since we since we did this the see? last time. You do see? look more Look how look how long ago that was. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You turned 40. I got married. I mean. You got married. Oh, my it's goodness. It's a good thing we're doing this. This webinar will be completely different <laughs> this is, the last one. This is why we're doing this again because this is – everything has changed. Everything is different. Now. Everything is different. <laughs> I have gray in my beard. Mm -hmm. yeah. Man. Well, um, everybody – so Josh is with Bethel Music. I think probably most of you know that if you're watching, he's a worship leader, he's a songwriter. And if you can't tell, he, he happens to be a good friend of mine. We've known each other a long, a long time and we're really good at making each other laugh. So there might be, <laughs> there might be some not so serious moments along the way tonight and that's fine. It'll make it, it'll make it that much more fun to watch. Um, I thought we'd start with um, having you, Josh, share a little bit about the song stand in your love i know a lot of a lot of us really love that song we've heard it we've sung it and led it in worship and i'd love to hear um, the story behind it or, or the process of how you how you wrote it okay well um it's uh i mean it's actually it's funny because there's a lot of songs that i write and have been a part of that have like these long elaborate like reasons behind it or even just like the the idea of that song started in some certain way and then I went and yeah. you know it's like way cooler than the actually the song is is actually um <laughs> and I find like the song stories are like that's so cool and then like not many people actually do like the song I mean it's fine you know it's whatever but um but stand in your love is not I mean, it's not necessarily one of those like um, amazing stories like that. It is amazing in a way that um, it's kind of just the Lord like putting me in little places where I had no idea what was going to happen, and then boom. And um, and I'll explain that here. I'll try to make this short story very long. Okay, um, perfect. <laughs> sorry. No, but I um. So the funny thing is I actually hadn't written a song in a while when I wrote it and I was kind of struggling. I had just released my, my last album, like not like a few months before that. And I was just one of those, like I was, I was like, okay, I just wrote all these songs and released them. I just want to sing those songs, you know, and we were in a season of writing new songs for our next Bethel worship album. And, 
I remember thinking, I don't have any new songs. I just released this. Can we just do one of those? Or, and they were just like, no, we want some new stuff. And I was like, well, I probably won't have any. I don't know. I'm probably not going to be on it. I don't I just was kind of thinking that way. And I, um, I don't know. I get in this vein and I'm like, I just want to sing the ones I wrote. I just want to do, you know, this is where I am right now. And I mm-hmm. um, wasn't feeling very inspired. And I, uh, Jeremy Riddle broke his leg dri- uh, driving his son's dirt bike. That's right. And, and he, um, he asked me, he had, he broke his leg and he p- punctured a lung. Yeah. So he was like kind of sidelined for a while. And then his first event back, he had a trip to um, Dallas to actually worship at a Todd White uh, conference. And he was just going by himself and he called me and said, Hey man, I need, can you go with me and just help me carry my stuff? Cause he was on crutches. But then he was like, also, can you lead worship with me? Because I don't even know how much I'm going to be able to sing because of my lungs. And so I was like, awesome. So it was like, Hey, cool. Two, three day trip with Jeremy, just me and him. And, uh, cause Jeremy's like my favorite worship leader. And, um, I, uh, So I thought, cool, this is awesome. This is a good getaway. And then I called Rita Springer, our friend, and um, she was in Dallas. She lived in Dallas. Yeah. And I said, Rita, when I'm in town, I'll stay like a day over if you want to hang out and maybe write. And um, so she was like, yes. So I did. And I stayed a day over. I was writing with Rita and actually Mark Harris and um, went from Gateway Church, Mark Harris, and also for him. Yeah. And uh, who's just a, I mean, it's cool because this is like Rita. I used to play drums with Rita. She's also like a hero, spiritual right. mom kind of person to me. And then Mark, who's like really one of my, like, I mean, I grew up in Christian music and just loving everything that he wrote. So that alone was just, this is amazing. And um, I, we were writing one night and, um, they had rented, they had had this house where a lot of the worship leaders at gateway were had come to write songs for their new worship album. And I was there and this guy walked in the room named Ethan Hulse who I'd never met and he had never met Rita. And he, he just Mark had brought in there. He came in the room and was just telling Mark that he had to go um, catch the flight at the airport to fly back to Nashville. He lives in Nashville. He's a songwriter. And um, so he was just saying, Hey, I've got to go. Thanks for bringing me out. And then he looked over and he introduced himself to me and he was like, Hey man, I don't know what you guys are in the middle of right now, but I've got this little thing that's been stirring in me for like, I think it, I think he said he had had like the, the idea of, of, um, fear, not standing a chance Mm -hmm. for like a while. But before he came into the room, he just started getting this, like the, the whole gist of the chorus, just the way it was sent like, I fear doesn't stand a chance. And uh, he walked in and like saw me and he's like, I, I can I sing this for you? I don't know if this might be something you would want to like mess around with. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, sure. I, mean, I think it was like five o'clock at night. We were tired and just we're like at that point, you're just like, yeah, anything new and fresh. Let's go. I don't you know. And so he started singing it and I was just floor. I thought, wow, this it felt fresh, but like very simple. Um, and it was just that, just that kind of a half chorus idea, but the whole idea of like fear, not standing a chance when you stand in the Lord's love. And, um, it was just like, I was like, yeah, can we mess around with this for like a while? And he had to leave. So we, we stopped and, um, stopped what we were doing. And the four of us just wrote those verses right there. And then he, he leaves and goes, jumps on a flight and I have, I didn't see him again for like seven months. And, um, and then, so I remember going home that weekend, I I was actually leading worship at church here at Bethel that Sunday. And I, um, I, I wrote the bridge when I we came home, just, I really just wrote the bridge so I could like have something so to sing on Sunday morning. And, um, we, I did it Sunday morning and just realized, wow, this is special. And, and it was just, and, and it ended up being on the album and it ended up being the first single that even released from that whole album. And, um, and then just what it's done in the past year, I mean, a year and a half, two years has been amazing. Uh, it, but it just, I think the story, I mean, the, the song, I mean, it's, it's, it speaks for, you know, it's out of John, 
Oh my gosh, I just went break. First John, four, is it the no fear and love? Yeah, yeah, perfect love casting out fear. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, um, and I love that it's like kind of like that whole that whole story, that whole thing, like um, in in just everyday language and just a mm -hmm. way that yeah move along you know i feel like it can hit people and it can come across it can be a worship song and it and it not honestly i was like i don't even know if this is like a worship song a traditional kind of like i wasn't sure but like i love i love that it it speaks to that but um i think the song for me just speaks to it's just when i think about it and when i think about writing it i think about where i was in that season and sure just how the lord just it, I mean, the things that lined up in my life for years prior to that one moment, just to make that moment even like happen are just kind of unbelievable to me when I just think about like, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gone there if it wouldn't have been my relationship with Jeremy. Um, I wouldn't have even, ha I, I've known, I'd known Rita for like 15 years. I had this long history with her mm -hmm. that even was made it possible for me to just be close enough to, to write. And then she goes to Gateway. That's how I met Mark here. I mean, just all the things that happened to line up to where I'm in this room and this guy, Ethan, walks in. Who Since then, Ethan has been like one of my closest friends. And we talk and we, he lives in Nashville. But we talk all the time. We wrote, we've written a lot of songs together since then. Oh, that's and, great. Yeah. I mean, so just all the things that have happened and that line in that moment up. And what it represents to me, just the Lord's faithfulness in my life. Um, I really like the story behind the song to me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, sorry if I made that really long. But well, that's no, that's great because that's a that's a different kind of story song. It's not just yeah. like, not like the lyrics or how you got the idea, but it's about the progression in your life that set you up for a moment that yeah. birthed, that birthed that song. And it does. It's a reminder of the faithfulness of God. It's a reminder of how how he's how he's already written our story he's crafting it. he's hovering over things he's watching over his word to perform it in our lives and that's an exciting thing to remember even as we're stepping into a brand new decade a brand new year right it's a year of of, of seeing him fulfill his promises not because we did something <laughs> he's right. like moving oh. us where we need to be and we don't even know you know we don't even realize it it's amazing how many and i think the reason i say hold on can I, I have to let my cat out. It's going to start. <laughs> <laughs> yes. While he's doing that, everybody, if you're just joining us, I welcome you to this webinar, our first Spirit and Truth webinar of 2020. Uh, please do uh, like, share, share this link on your page so more and more people know that this is happening right now. Um, thank God we're not competing against Jeopardy. That doesn't start till eight o'clock. <laughs> yes, we have to get so out of here. The big one is on this week. The big, like, the top is three. Really? Yeah, the top three oh. champions of all time. So the nerd in me is like, I want to see it. I want to watch it. <laughs> That's amazing. Anyway. Uh, I love that. <laughs> so moving right along. I think that that's really an incredible story. And I, I, um, I think we should talk, Josh, a little bit about, you know, we, we call these webinars spirit and truth webinars. And the heart behind these times is to have conversations with, um, you know, a lot of worship leaders and uh, teachers. Like we had last year, we had Graham Cook, we had Ray Hughes, and yeah, um, well, really amazing teachers on worship yeah. and other topics just to have conversations and kind of pull pull on our guests to, to share from their heart to share from the well of their life experience in God and those kinds of things but the you know the theme the overarching theme that holds us all together is from John 4 you know that scripture that we all love about worshiping those who worship worship in spirit and truth. And uh, actually, look at this. So this is my brand new, I, I wanted one of these for a long time. This is a passion, yeah. a passion translation of the New Testament. I don't really, when I'm studying or reading regularly, I, I don't prefer, like I, I use like the English standard, but for just, you know, something fresh to yeah, make it. I love it. Pop, yeah. So I actually, I wanted to read um, this scripture. <laughs> Um, Jesus responded, believe me, dear woman, the time has come when you won't worship the Father on a mountain nor in Jerusalem, but in your heart. Your people mm -hmm. don't really know the one they worship. And it goes on. He says, from here on, worshiping the Father will not be a matter of the right place, but with the right heart. For God is a spirit, and he longs to have sincere worshipers who worship and adore him in the realm of the spirit and in truth. 
So that's kind of our theme, our theme yeah. verse for this whole, you know, deal that we're doing. Anything you want to share on that theme, Josh? I mean, I, um, when I think about that and when I, I read it and think about the story and just what he's saying, I feel, um, it's sometimes I think the mountaintop, I feel like it can mean like a, a lot of different things for my life. And I think the mountain, everybody has their own mountaintop. Everybody has their own when he's like, worship, we won't just worship here. Um, mm-hmm. For me, a lot of times it's like, we won't, I grew up in church and that's all I know, honestly, as mm-hmm. you know, I don't have this moment where I just wasn't in church and then I came to the Lord and then I started, I was born on a Sunday and in church on the next day. <laughs> and that is literally what happened. That's not just saying, but, um, me too. I, and, and I, um, I think a lot of times for me, like the, that mountaintop thing can be, um, uh, it can be in some ways church in some ways, like conditions being perfect in a lot of ways. Um, and, and I don't know, I don't know that that's necessarily what it fully means. I, I just, I think it can be, um, yeah, conditions being per. it's easier to worship the Lord or to, to, to be thankful and, and have a heart of thankfulness toward him, towards him and gratitude when things are going well and when things right. just moving along like they should and like you feel like they should. Mm-hmm. And, um, but for me, it's like, okay, but when, um, when I'm going through a time of, of doubt or worry, or I'm just starting to have, feel this worry or this anxiety come on me in those moments, I want like my first response to be, okay, no, I'm just going to take it to the Lord and just, I'm going to give it to him, but I'm also just going to just thank him for what he's done in my life, what he's done in my family's life, what he's doing. And, um, and I think too, the truth part of it for me is, is that is being honest about maybe where I am and, but not like, but not sitting around and just wallowing in that, just taking it to him and giving it to him. Yeah. And I think when you do it, it's not just, a, um, I think there's definitely a place for, um, lamenting and all that. I just think too, um, there's a time to get out of that too and just focus on him and not, yeah. you know, just gazing on ourselves. If that makes sense. Exactly. Like, Exactly. It makes total sense. And I, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think even in, in the, you know, the passage of scripture there, there, there was so much, you know, debate and fixation on the, the, the place of worship, like where, yeah. where worship has to happen. And, and sometimes we can tend to get in those same places, maybe not about a, a, a building itself, but, but even the conditions. Yeah. Uh, conditions being just right so that I can worship the proper way. And, and Jesus is like, now you're going to find out it's, it's, it's a lifestyle and you're the, yeah. you're the temple. Right. right. I'm going to, the time's coming soon. I'm going to be living in a people. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the temple where I'm worshiped. And so it's now it's becoming a matter of, of worship but from the right heart. Yeah. Learning, learning how to express and uh, pour out from, from that place. So what you said was really good. And that brings me to the other thing I was hoping we could talk about a little bit, because I know um, a lot of us just a, what a month ago, um, were really watching and praying about some things that were going on in the Bethel community um, concerning uh, Callie's daughter, Olive, yeah. and yeah. what was going on with that. So um, I'd love it if you would just share, because I know what happened ultimately, like the Lord has just done, a, a, a tremendous work even in, in the community there at, at Bethel, which is just starting to spread um, yeah. kind of an awakening in, in the hearts of a people who are rallying and contending for resurrection. So if yeah. you could share a little bit with us about that, we'd, we'd love to hear more. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to, I'll do, I'll do my best. This is the first time I've talked about it outside of <laughs> home and, and, and all. Um, I, uh, can you hear, can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. I, um, yeah, I, I mean, if, yeah, if you're on social media, which I mean, if you're on social media, you'd have to be on social media right now to be watching this, I guess. Wouldn't you? <laughs> but, <laughs> um, I, you've probably heard about, um, of, you know, with Callie and uh, Andrew and Callie Holligenthal and, um, a little olive who went to be with Jesus and, um, 
yeah, I mean, there's, there's obviously like a ton to it that I won't like get into just because I don't, you know, it's not my family, but, um, I, uh, what it did was for, we had, we had time, we had days there to just contend and to take the Lord at his word, what it says in the word, you know, that we have, we have him living in us and he's, we've been given authority to heal the sick, raise the dead. And, um, and so we just did, we just went for, and we did that. Um, and that was Andrew and Callie's record. They were like, listen, there was a time period where they couldn't really see Olive because of all the, what happens after everything. Um, yes. so it wasn't like we, they, that, that, um, everything was on hold and, and the process after someone dying, Mm -hmm. wasn't on hold until you know we just we had a window there to go after the lord i think it was five or six days yeah and and that was and it was their record they were like we here's the thing we were that they're definitely grieving there was a place of that but we're like we're also we we believe that the lord said this and we want to go after it and so it was unbelievable to to first of all see my some close friends of mine in this horrible time just believe this and go after this. And then when they said, we want to go after this to see our community, just be like, all right, well, we're all, we're going, we're with you and we don't care what it looks like. We're just going to do it. And, um, when that happened, um, I'm, we, we just started meeting at night and doing worship nights and kind of just were like, and it was, and that the thing was, it wasn't just a worship night and it wasn't like, um, it wasn't like we're going, we're praying and, and just going to like go after like life. Fly, you know, we weren't, it wasn't just totally directed at praying for Olive to come to life, to mm-hmm. wake up. It was, we were going in those like worshiping the Lord. Like, here's what we're going to do. We're not going to strive. We're yeah. not going to just try to like, you know, pound our fist and just Lord, please. We're going to go in this. So like we've been given this authority and we, know who we are in Christ and we're just going to enter in and we're going to worship and we're definitely going to proclaim things and speak out. And, but there was this, like these five nights of worship that were the most amazing nights I've ever been a part of in my life. And the fact that we're doing it was like all of our best friends there mm-hmm. going after something for our other best friend. It, it, it's just, it's hard to explain. And I had a lot of people, um, well, not a lot, but I did have friends that, and people on social media question like, what happens if, if, if the Lord doesn't answer his prayer and do, do you know, do you will it do, shake your faith? Yeah. Right? Will it shake your faith? Mm-hmm. And it's done the opposite. Honestly, like it has awakened something inside of all of us here to know that this is, this is a new, this is what, what we have. Yeah. And this is what can happen when we all come together and go after something and just believe what the Lord said. I mean, that's like kind of what it was. It was like when you just break it down to like, we're just like, here's what the Lord said. And so we're just going to believe it and just worship him out of that. And yeah. it was unbelievable to see what happened. And it stirred something up here. And, um, and you know, and, and little Olive, she's in heaven. And we had um, an amazing memorial and service. And that was it was just unbelievable. Um, wow. and, but I, 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 after that, um, tonight, even I was just telling you earlier there, we have, um, we we're doing another worship night tonight and, and, um, at our young adult service that usually takes place tonight, but they just, they were like, we don't want to do a young adult service. We just want to do another worship night. And it's after everything. So it's just like mm-hmm. this whole thing is stirred up something. It's like, well, we can't go back now to just normal life. Like this is, we have, and, and the crazy thing is, um, and I'm all like stirred up. I don't, it's like the first time I've talked about it. So I'm, like, I'm like trying to find out how to even talk about it. I'm like, and I don't, uh, uh. but, um, you know, Olive's name is, um, her middle name, Elaine means awakening. Wow. And, um, okay. and, and, you know, and we were contending for that and, 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 you know, obviously worshiping, but also just even speaking out her name and the meaning of her name. And, and I really mean Sheila and I were talking about this and, and then others in the, our community have obviously this, this is obvious to us all now that what the awakening that was happening was in us. And it's, it's like, 
little olive like awakened something all of a sudden the lord used her mm-hmm. to awaken something in us and this and it just has it's something that's stirred up and you just feel like man i don't i can't I, yeah like i said before i just i can't go back to just like normal you know christian church right and, and even in worship it's um i just i think i led worship on a sunday in the middle of all this and it was chris it was um yeah, I live worship on a Sunday, and I was just like, I don't even know how to go back to just like Sunday morning, like just go through the. Through the you know, I mean, we're Bethel. We don't necessarily go. I mean, every church in some ways goes through the. You know, when you have multiple services, you got to be out of there at a certain time, and all this, you still have things that you have to like, you know, go along with, and they're not bad. Um, but in my head, I remember telling Sheila, I was, I was just like thinking, I don't know how I even just go back to just normal things you know like i don't know yeah i don't know how that if that makes sense i I, um it's 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 kind of crazy the joy that that that's here and in our community in the midst of all this um and even in cali and andrew uh they're just they're they're um, they're amazing they're that's yeah and that's amazing to me you think about like what, what all of you are experiencing really to, to me, it seems like it's, it's an, it's an overflow of the initial response of mom and dad, when, oh, totally. you know, when they experience what maybe the darkest hour of their lives, their response yeah. to the, you know, the, they, they chose a response to, to lean into the Lord, to trust him, to believe God for the biggest thing. And just, yeah. you know, just throw themselves into him instead of, you know, there, it, there's, I've watched, you know, Josh, and you probably have too, like even in my larger community of people that I know or that I have walked with, you know, it, my journey has, has gone parallel with them for seasons. And, yeah. and some of, you know, I have a lot of friends who are still going strong with the Lord and then there's other friends of mine who, even some who I never would have thought would be the ones who would waver who like something happens that they experience disappointment or pain or any number of things that understandably shook them. Yeah. Ultimately the the way they responded to God in that moment has shifted their path now and they're way over here somewhere, you know, and we're, you know, we, we're, we're not promised that everything's going to be right. That We're going to have all the answers. We're, we're not going to understand it all. And we, so faith gets tested. And I think even more so in the age that in which we live, where there's so, there's so much shaking going on, you know, being really grounded and, and digging that deep well with the Lord and having hi- history with God and, you know, um, remembering and reminding yourself of his faithfulness, that, like yeah. put those markers down those monuments in your life to the, to the victories and the things that help you when the storms come, you know? So like, yeah. I think it's an incredible, so my point is like their response, their heart response helped to birth something for all of you that you yeah. could all rally around. Isn't that, that's incredible. It's, that. It really is. And it, I mean, I think it goes back to even what we were saying about worshiping in spirit and truth. Yes. When those times come, there's, um, there's, there's an opportunity to go the other way and just, you know, doubt and all this worry but then there's also, there can be the opportunity to worship in the midst of that. And there's this sweet aroma that Pastor Bill, he even talks about this, this aroma that can come through in your worship, through grief, through, through um, struggles that, that is not there as much, you know, when, when we're worshiping the Lord, just thanking him for in the good seasons. And that there's something sweet that comes out of like, uh, this something horrible is happening. I don't understand it, yeah. but I choose to believe that you are good. Lord, and I'm just going to worship. And I, another thing Pastor Bill said in the middle of all this that that I just thought was amazing was he's like, I've, I've been, you know, he's been a pastor for years and he's like, I've been around families that have had horrible things like this happen. And he said, the ones that have made it through and not just made it through, but made it through and come out even stronger in the Lord, they, they did that because they had this overwhelming sense of the goodness of God. Yeah. And it was what kept them through all of this that that didn't make sense, but just this 
there was still this rock that, well, I, but I know the Lord is good. And I know that he can turn anything and make it good. And, um, yeah. And it's, we, and we've seen it. We, it, we've just, we've seen, I mean, you know, I, this is something Callie and Andrew will carry forever and it'll be like her. It's not just something that happened to them. Now it's something. And she's even said this, it's like, this is now like a mandate that I, that you have in some ways to take this out and be like, okay, this is the message I'm taking out the rest yeah. of my life. This is what will flow out of me the rest of my life. So yeah, I'm just, I, I, Sheila and I were talking, we've taught this whole last three weeks about how, what a gift it is to be in this community. And just, we're like, can, I can't, like, where else would we be? I mean, I'm, there's some other amazing places, but I just, I, I'm just so thankful to be in a place where something like this happens and you have this overwhelming yes to like going after something like this that you just feel so loved and so taken care of and so seen and so together in one thing. It was just, it's yeah. It's I know, that's beautiful. And community is beautiful. It's a beautiful expression of God's love and of the, well, it's what the, the, the body of Christ should be like. Yeah. Um, that's, that's really, that's powerful. I think, um, well, that, yeah, I had a question. I think we pretty much just covered, um, let's, let's shift gears for just a minute and talk about, um, I want, I want, I had a, a question that someone, um, gave us on social media and I'm going to, I'm going to throw it out there. It's kind of a big question. Um, and I'll try to answer it too. Cause it, it got me thinking. And the question was just as we've just exited you know, not just a year, but we've exited a decade and started a new decade. The question yeah. is, can you expound on three things that greatly impacted your life in the last decade? So it's like, wow. Last year, but just thinking about a, a chunk of time. And like, okay. Yeah. I just cherry pick three. <laughs> then you, a fourth of my life. <laughs> <laughs> what would you pick or, or just choose, you know, it doesn't have to be yeah. three, but choose three things that you would oh. say major impact on my life well i mean it's i mean it's i want to say yeah it's i mean it's, it feels pretty easy for me i i mean in the last 10 years my whole life has completely changed <laughs> um, i mean i i got married in 2010 um I, and then right. a year later a year later we had my daughter a oh. year later 2012 we had my son <laughs> and then, pretty right there <laughs> It's three right there. And that's like, honestly, the biggest change you could probably have in life. Um, I, um, and I, know, I don't want to, I don't want to like, you know. Let that, that can count as one. Yeah, no, that's a big, that's like family, family. I mean, we were, my, Sheila was doing that whole thing on um, Instagram where you, where she went back and like every year in the decade, she like threw up the major thing. And I was like, wow, like 2010 was, we got married, 11 Ellie was born, 12, Bear was born. I think 2014, uh, we, were, we signed with Bethel Music and all that. 2015, we moved to Reading. It was like, wow, this has been like a crazy 10 years. Um, so I think, I think this whole decade, and even to go back, um, to take it back even to the Stand Your Love song story, um, and I don't know if, and now, now I forgot. I, I remember now you wanted three things. Um, but <laughs> I'll, right. say, I'll sum it up. There was a ton of things. The thing, I don't know if I could even break it down into just three because there whole, there's the life, the family changes and the, the life. And uh, every album that I feel like I do is like this massive, like it's like another child that you give birth to. I mean, you know, when you do an album, it's just like this whole thing that you just like give into the world and like, here, here's my baby. Yeah think it's pretty you know so and then it you know um i but i think this whole this last decade was um really the lord just just showing me his faithfulness and his kindness and um because i think about the decade prior to that um uh, which you're very much involved in that our the tw <laughs> our my 20s and right. um, and i you know it it was with all what you know family stuff coming ministry school things and leading worship in the mountains in the middle of nowhere and 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 yeah. 
all of this that were amazing times, but also really just like the time of the Lord, like refining me and teaching me how to be an adult and teaching me how to lead worship and teaching me how to write, you know, and really just, it was a time of just growth and training Mm -hmm. and it was tough and also fun, but also there was a grace for, you know, it was just all these things that prepared me for like the last 10 years. The last 10 years was like, and really the last five, it specifically has been the Lord, um, like almost take like the seeds that I have planted and sown. It's like had started to come to life and bloom. And in the last five years, I feel like it's the things that I planted and almost forgot that I had planted them. Yeah. But, but maybe because I had stayed faithful, it that was like the faithfulness was and was like watering those seeds in some ways. And um, and I finally in the last three year, three to five years saw these, these things come to life and bloom into things that have just been so beautiful and touch me and make me cry constantly. And, um, so yeah, I just think, that, yeah. What a decade life, for you. It, it's been amazing and it's been, it's been fun and it's been a really adventure and I, uh, it makes me really appreciate my wife too, because I don't think, I mean, we wouldn't be in California if it wasn't for her. Just because she like, she's the she's the go getter. She's like the the fighter. The like, we, here's what the Lord said, and here's what we need to do. And I'm like, I don't know. That sounds tough. I don't want to do that. And then <laughs> <laughs> there's just so I look around. I'm like, wow. I feel like all the good things I have in life are because Sheila like forced us to like do something. And well, go. See, God knew. He knew what who you you know yes, what you needed. Did. And it, yeah, it's great because I can still be me. I mean, there's definitely time I need to like, all right, let's go, Josh. Wake up. Get out there. And then, <laughs> but then there's also, I realize there's something that's, you know, it just, there's something, uh, I want to say special, but I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> but there's something <laughs> special about being little. Old me. No, I mean. You're special, I, Josh. Yeah. I, I, it's helped me see the, the, the good parts of my nature and yeah. the things that, that make me a rock and stable in a lot of other, in a lot of areas. Mm-hmm. And then um, I have my wife who is just a fire that yeah. is ready to go. And she, in all the areas where I just want to stay over here in the safe zone, comfort zone, she's like, no, let's take the Lord and, and let, let's take the Lord at what he says. And like, here's what he said we could do. So let's have faith and go for it. And I'm like, Okay, and then the Lord just comes through, and it's amazing. And um, it's, it's beautiful. And, uh, so yeah. yeah, that's what that's what the last decade, which is cool because I'm ne- I haven't thought about that until just now. And um, as far as like the last decade, I'm not. Yeah, I have to be honestly um, sometimes provoked to to think about things like that, and just like sure. about the past year and what has the past year meant to me, and what has the past decade meant to me. Right. Yeah, it's really well, and and I think like jumping off of that, then we're we're now looking forward. You know, would you do you have um, any goals or or thoughts about what's like the next the next decade or like even the next year of your life? Where do you, where do you, what do you want to pursue next? I know you you're going to keep writing and those kinds of things, but yeah. do you have any any areas you're focusing on? Yeah. Um, I mean, well, I mean, to be honest, I have, I haven't, I've thought about it, but I haven't like overly thought about it. I, um, I, I know I want, yeah, I feel like I'm just hitting a vein as, and in some, in some areas of, uh, of writing and, 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 yeah. and, and um, just the seasons and streams and, and things that I'm flowing in. I feel like I've just hit a vein in some of that. So I'm, I feel like that's just going to continue and, hopefully grow and then but I also can see and I think turning 40 back in July did this to me um I can see like I, like Brian always jokes around actually here's the thing Brian doesn't always joke about this but he did joke about this on my 40th birthday at worship you this past year we were praying to go to the service and Brian you know they they sang happy birthday to me and Brian said cuz he's 40 one, I think he's like a year older than me, maybe two. And he said, uh, 
hey, 40 is 85 in worship leader years. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but, you know, in some ways, there, in some ways there's some truth to that. But uh, uh, I, so I, I think this last year or the last, especially the last six months, I've started to think like, okay, I don't, I don't think I'm like one of the young guys anymore. Like I've always just thought of myself as like, Hey, young guy, I'm just like starting out. I'm just like little guy, you know? And then I'm like, then people start asking me, how long have you led worship or how long have you been writing songs? And I'm thinking, I'm like, Oh, like over 20 years. Wow. Like older, I've been doing this longer than you've been alive. Wow. You definitely and, qualify to be a spiritual father at this point. And you can't yeah, well, that's, and that's, <laughs> that's what I think is starting to hit me in the last few months. Like, oh, as I see our young, these, this young crop of worship leaders that comes into Bethel and um, that's either leading worship more and more and they'll yeah. travel for this and go on the road. And, that, and now I'm the old guy and not like old old, but, you know, I'm the veteran guy. And I, um, I realize like what I – have inside that I can like pour out and I've never quite been that person that thought I had that much inside to pour out and um and that's not like a false I mean maybe it was some of it was false humility I don't know but I it wasn't like I I think once I just sat down and thought about it I realized how much I do have inside and just the years that teach you and train you and trial and error this works this doesn't the Lord taught me this in this season and and it's just like things you learn from just doing it for a long time. And I realize how much of that I have inside. And I feel like I am going to be stepping into a phase of life that is pouring that out on a younger generation. Mm-hmm. And, and that feels, that feels cool. It feels like it feels good. It's a little yeah. scary. I don't want to be old guy. I still kind of want to stay relevant. But, um, you are, oh, but you are. You're relevant. You're that's relevant. Why I, that's why I'm wearing my hoodie right now. I got, <laughs> I got like my Adidas like tennis shoes. Oh on. yeah. <laughs> Try to be cool. Actually, they're really just dad tennis shoes. <laughs> I bought some cool. I bought some cool gear this week, it and uh, <laughs> everybody, look out! This is gonna be good. To stay hip with my interface here, and uh, that I don't know how to work at all. Um, <laughs> You'll figure it out. Just get someone who's 20 years old. I'll get, oh, actually, I know the guy. Actually, there's a 20-year-old kid that texts me all that stuff. He's like, this is what you should get. And I was like, okay, I'll get that. <laughs> I'll, so. That's yeah. cool. But, you know, in all seriousness, Josh, it is – I felt kind of some of the same things when I crossed over into my 40s, and it was actually very exciting and strangely invigorating on the inside yeah. to feel yeah. like something come on me like a – that I was stepping into something that was more like being a spiritual mother, which I yeah. mean, and yeah. that's the same for you. And I don't know if Brian, it meant this or not with his comment, but 35 makes, I mean, uh, 85 makes me think immediately of Caleb in the Bible. That's how old he was. Wow. He was 85. When he was 85, he was just as uh, healthy and vivacious as he was when he was 40. When he, you know, when he first went into the land as a spy, he had all yeah. this time had passed when he finally was able to step into his uh, inheritance, yeah. you know, the I land. Think, I know he didn't think of that. He was just cracking a very <laughs> much. <laughs> well, it was far deeper than he even realized. But it was. And that's, that, you know, that's so good. I, uh, I love that. I, I love, I think I'm in this place where I, there is that, there's that side of it that's hit me this year where, you know, my hair is turning gray. I'm 40. I'm, you know, twice the age of a lot of our young worship leaders. And I feel like I have a lot to give and offer. But then also on the other side, like all these new fresh things are happening, the things I dreamed about in my 20s and then kind of passed through time and thought that won't happen, but I'm just going to – I love what I'm doing. I love where we are. And then all of a sudden, boom, I hit 40, and I'm like, you know, songs on the radio and this kind of – and then I get to go to the double – you know, like things like that that I'm like, I'm too old for that. That's – I'm too old for this to be like the first time this is happening to me. And, um, but it's brought this like sweetness to it where I'm, I just so thankful because it ha- it's obvious the Lord. It's just not, I mean, I didn't try to make it happen. And then just all the years that have passed of just doing the things that I've been doing. And then this happened, it's, it's made it even sweeter. So it's like this cool, like balance of, 
like I have all these years behind me that I feel like I have to offer to younger generation, but then this fresh new thing where I'm like learning and like, I'm the new guy in this world. And yeah. I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? But um, so yeah, it's been really cool. Wow. That's cool. Um, what should we, okay. We're going to do a, a couple rapid fire questions here for you. Are you ready? Yes. Um, a little while ago, our, uh, I think you know him. Leo Alves just asked um, how your jump shot is. Oh, it's really good. I actually played last night, Leo. I play every Monday night at the church, Bethel Church. We uh, move all the chairs, and it's a drop the court, drop the goals down, and it's a court there. Played, and uh, I didn't shoot as well last night, but it's still pretty lethal. You're pretty still there. Good. Still That's there. That's the big thing we needed to know from you, because I, I run slower and I jump lower, but my shot is still is still on point. Awesome. All right, next question. So the, actually someone asked this today and uh, I've actually thought about this before So I don't know if we're the best people to answer this question, but we're gonna tackle it anyway. This has to do with um, kind of the development of music and uh, The the person who asked the question said back in the 90s Vineyard songs had truly worshipful guitar solos Do you see any place for them today or in the future? And I get I get what he's referencing. I think because yeah, that music did have a lot more, um, not, and it wasn't just Vineyard, but I guess Vineyard was kind of a, the breakthrough people that, there was a lot of groove in songs, yeah. and there was re real actual solos, like take yeah. a so electric guitar player would take a solo as opposed to like a melodic eighth note line or something. Yeah, yeah. no, I, you know what, and too, I think about, I think some of that, I think, I do, I have a couple thoughts on that. Um, I think sometimes we think that it's like that's more of like a worship thing and like, well, maybe we're not making room for like someone to step out in that and worship. And I think that can, can and probably is the case in some areas. Like maybe there just needs to be some time to just let a musician go for it and, and, and just prophesy, if you will, with, with their instrument. Yeah, and I think that can happen. I don't think that's the only th reason. I think a lot of it probably is just styles of music. I and mean, you think about the 80s and the 90s and music, there were a lot of solos in music, yeah. period. Like, you think about some of the big 80s songs and the big 90s songs. Yeah. You have, like, the song, or you have, like, the verses, the chorus, and then you have, like, the solo, the lick that, you know, that, that everyone, that was, it was just more prevalent. And I think that was some of it back then was just, that's the way music was more. Right. Were, soloing was like more of a thing. And so when you, when these guys who played that kind of music went into worship and playing worship music, it was just like, okay, and now we solo and not meaning that that was the only reason, but that was just like, that was the, that was the style. The and style so then, and the form. Yeah. yeah. was prevalent. So it, just like nowadays, there's more, probably more tracks and more, um, stuff with computer i mean just because we're in the age now or maybe that's more of a thing and it's so that creeps its way in so i think a lot of it is just style of music that has changed and, and nowadays it's kind of more cold play brought along the whole <laughs> it's not as much about guitar solos as it is about like a, a, a lick or a turnaround or yeah, riff a melodic motif yeah. mm -hmm. and so um and i i love I love it all. I love solos. I love, sorry, is this thing like dinging every time I get oh, it? Oh, it is. Yeah, you didn't turn your notifications off probably. I've <laughs> learned the hard way, all the things I have to do before I go live. It's, is it too late now? We're almost done. Yeah, we're, we're, um, we're close to the finish line. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> if they haven't left yet, they're not going to leave now. Because of it. No, but I, I, so yeah, I think, I love it. I love guitar solos. I think with um, my song, Let the Redeem, the live version, we, we, well, the first time I let it at church, when our, when our guitar players, David Heslop, he just started like, so I told him, I was like, hey, there's this one kind of moment in here where, I don't know, I feel like you should just like solo. <laughs> it's like, yeah. really? He got so <laughs> excited because no one ever does that anymore. He's like, okay. And so he just like did this thing. And it kind of became the song, part of the song. And, and wow. it's more, not as much with the like radio version, but with, cause mm -hmm. you can't do that on radio. You'll scare all the, the, the people out of you. Know, <laughs> well, um, you only get three minutes. So you don't, yeah, you don't have much time, but, um, 
but if we do it in worship in the live live uh, times, it's we have he just solos out. And I remember, um, I think it's on YouTube. Somebody commented like, "I'm so pumped about a guitar solo in a worship song again." And I was like, "That's right, let's go." Yeah. <laughs> so, I um, yeah, I think there's a place for it. I think, I think most of the reason it's not around is just maybe because styles have changed yeah the influence of a style and i mean the way things go you know with with music and looking back in history there's a lot of things that cycle back around so right totally see it again who knows you know i think some of it too is as styles change like guitar players don't learn how to solo quite as much they learn more like how to play licks or how to make your tone sound this and or that and so there's probably a lot of people that don't even not that they don't know how to, but you know, it's just, it's, there's some of it is a lost art in some ways. Sure. Yeah. That, that makes sense. You know who, who could expound on that for us is Leonard Jones. We should have him. Yeah. I, it is funny. <laughs> it is funny that I'm the guy that's talking about the guitar solos and I'm like, I'm just, over, I'm just over here playing my cowboy chords. <laughs> just, oh, capo. Here we go. You're <laughs> all right so uh let's since you mentioned let the redeemed we've only got a few minutes but before before we um wrap it up and you pray us out tonight why don't you share um so let the redeemed is your newest uh it's a single right it is a single yeah i um i just kept writing songs before i had enough for an album and then they liked them, so they were like, well, let's just get it out. <laughs> so, well, uh, I was reading the lyrics today, and I love the line in this song that says, there's no sound louder than a captive set free. Yeah. I, yeah, that's my favorite line. I, um, well, this whole, this song is, I mean, it's, it's um, uh, obviously, it's out of Psalm 107, the uh, let the redeemed Lord say so. Yeah. Um, which I do love the passion version of that. We were talking about that passion earlier. Um, and oh, I oh. used to know it by heart and I just forgot because it's the way it says it. If you can find it, it's I'm pretty awesome. Psalm 107. This is like a brand new Bible. So I don't have any markers or anything yet. Uh, okay. Let, Oh, there's so, so many words. I don't know what verse <laughs> it is. <laughs> I can't find like the reading. Uh, let everyone give all their praise and thanks to the Lord. Oh, what is uh, mm. the verse? The excellence. What is the actual verse? Hold the on. actual yes. verse. I should know this. Someone's telling you right now. They're telling you. I wish I had turned this off and now I can't figure it out. <laughs> I'll figure it out once I uh, once I figure out how to share all this on Facebook. <laughs> I well, I'll I'll talk while you find it. I um, yeah. I mean, the the cool thing about that song is a year before we finished writing it, um, my friend Bobby and I, Bobby Strand, we we wrote that chorus. Let the redeemed Lord say so, and um, it's verse two. It says, "So go ahead, let everyone know it." Tell the world how he broke through and delivered you from the power of darkness. That is it. Tell the world how he broke through and delivered yeah. you from the, that is what I love. I, I, um, I love the way they says that because I think I, um, you know, we grew up with that song. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yeah. Um, and I think as a kid, I never, I was like, what does that even mean? Like, are we, so, supposed we to, always go, yeah. so. <laughs> and so the funny thing is, um, Bobby, my friend who, who grew up, he grew up a Christian, but he didn't necessarily grow up like church kid like me. And so he started, he had this idea. He's like, I, what about like we write a song about, you know, let the redeemed and this. And my first thought was it's that old song. And I was like, I don't know, man. I, all I could think about was that old song. And then we started to try to unpack it. I was like, wait, what did I not understand about that old song? It's like, I did, it didn't really unpack what it was to me. I don't think it unpacked what, what that, that scripture is actually saying. And so I was like, Oh, well, yes, let's do that. Let's. And so we had that chorus and for like a year I had this chorus and um, I sat down actually with Callie and we started working on verses I mean, her and I and Bobby. And then um, finally we um, last year, my buddy, Ethan, who wrote stand in your love with me, he um he came to town to visit and i was like 
Ethan, help us with this song. We like, we, we need something. So Ethan came in and helped us uh, unpack the, the verses. And then we wrote the bridge together, me and him and Callie. And, um, but it just, it, it became this song that like, I, I love because it, it unpacks that scripture of like, yeah. um, tell the, tell the world what the Lord has done for you. And cause, because it, it all comes back to that line, like, cause there is no, no sound louder than a captive set free. It's that whole, like I've been redeemed. This is where I was. This is what happened. This is where I am now. And here's what he did for me. And like, there's no, there's nothing more powerful than our own tower testimony. Yeah. And, so I, that's, I love it. I think, um, I love that it feels nostalgic in a way because of just the, the scripture in that old song. Um, but then I love the, um, it feels like a fresh take on that and feels like it unpacks that scripture. Yeah. And it needed yeah. to be written because you're right. Like, like the, the original song, although it did help us memorize the scripture, it didn't necessarily teach us what it yeah. meant. Yeah. Yeah. And I love I think that's why I love I love that about worship songs when they um I mean I look back and a lot of the verses that I I know the best are ones that were in a song exactly you know and it just like you add melody to it and so I'm like that's man that's that's so I love that I love that I can just apply scripture to the song and make it throw a melody in there and and it grabs on to people absolutely. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, Josh, thank you so much for the past hour. Thanks for talking thank to you. us tonight. It, I um, apologize for my notifications going off the whole yeah. time. <laughs> hey, we're just I'll in here. In dining, huh? We're here in my dining room. And it's just, uh, it's just uh, you guys and us. And this is life. This is. <laughs> and this is this is my, look what I hit on the show. Ooh, I've got one of those. Got one of those here. You. Because I sent you one. I don't know what we're going to give you this time. Last time we sent you our thank you presents were a mug and a t-shirt. We don't have any more product to send you. I'll take another mug, please. Another mug. <laughs> send you. Is it okay if we pay you in coffee? <laughs> his, and her, his and her mugs. Yes. That's perfect. Well, everybody, make sure you um, – Follow Josh so you don't miss out on what's coming. I know there's some mu new music coming in the next new music. Oh, wow, you don't want to miss Josh's new songs. So follow yeah. him on the things. You know what to do. And same same holds true for Access Access Worship yeah. International. Follow us on on um, social media and um, you know interact with us. We'd love to hear from you. We are a nonprofit. This is actually year number three for us. Wow. Um, we've really been trying to br break some new ground in terms of. Um, helping to resource the nations, particularly Russian speaking nations. So we're, we're working on some, we do like online courses and uh, the very first online course we ever created was on prophetic worship. And now it has been, um, all the work has been done, like voicing over all the teaching so that now we can provide that really what our heart is to do it uh, free or at very, very minimal cost and make it available to um, 11 time zones. You know, there's 11 time zones in the Russian speaking world. That's pretty, pretty immense. Wow. So anyway, Josh, why don't you, um, if you wouldn't mind, just like close us out in prayer, maybe just pray a blessing over the folks who are yeah. watching or will be watching. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, Lord, I just thank you for this time to just, uh, to hang out with friends, but also just talk about you and just, uh, that's always, so so fun so life-giving um you've just been so good to us and i just thank you again for your faithfulness and your goodness and lord i just yeah i pray for everyone watching everyone who's going to watch that you would just uh bless them in a new and real way and then this year 2020 would just be a year of awakening for all of us and that you would just continue to awaken us to to what you're doing, but just also just awaken us to your goodness, awaken us to who you are and that we are able to just worship you in spirit and truth. And it, and we can worship you like we said on the mountaintops and in the depths mm -hmm. of our deepest, darkest Valley, we still worship you. We still go after you. And because we know that you, you are good. And Lord, I just thank you for that. I thank you for what you're doing here with access and with Kalani and with the whole team and Lord, I pray just special blessings this year over this whole, this whole ministry. And uh, yeah, Lord, 
We love you. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> okay. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.